And here's our first example of how to find the amount of moles in a product when the amount of moles of a uh, reactant are given. So here we have some glucose that's being consumed and assuming that we're consuming 10 moles of glucose and we breathe in oxygen, our bodies will then turn that into energy and the byproducts are that we breathe out carbon dioxide and we also produce water. And so that's then known as a type of combustion reaction. So how many moles of CO2 are produced? Well, first of all, we have to balance the equation. So starting out with uh, looking at this equation, maybe we'll start with carbon. And notice that um, we have carbon, but we have six of them in this molecule, and there's only one carbon over here. So to balance the carbon, we're going to need to put a six over here. So now we have six carbons on the right side of the equation, and we have six carbons on the left side of the equation. Next, we'll take hydrogen. Here we have 12 hydrogens, and here we only have two hydrogens. So that means to balance the hydrogen out, I'll need six more of these. So I'll put a six in front here, and six times two is 12. That means the 12 hydrogens over here. So now hydrogen is balanced. Now we're left with oxygen. On the left side, we have six oxygens here and two oxygens there. That's a total of eight oxygens. Here we have 12 oxygens on this side, and we have six more on this side. So 12 plus six are 18. So we have 18 oxygens over here, and here we have six plus two more, we only have eight oxygens over here. Hmm, we're missing 10 oxygens. That means we need to increase the number of oxygen that we use over here. And so we cannot make it up here because if we change this number here, then we have to change those number there so we go back and forth, but we can change the number over here. So if we need a total of 18 and we already have six there, that means we need 12 more from here. 12, that means we need the six in front here. Six times two gives me 12. And now we have 18 oxygens on the left, 18 oxygens on the right, and the equation is balanced. So we're ready to go. Now we can answer the question. So we're trying to find the numbers of moles of carbon dioxide produced. So number of moles of CO2 is equal to the number of moles of the reactant that's given here. So the number of moles of and what were we given? 10 moles of glucose, so number of moles of glucose, that would be C6H12O6, and then we multiply that times the ratio of the number of moles of the product divided by the number of moles of the reactant. So number of moles of the product we're looking for, and I'll just go mole like that without the S, it's more appropriate, mole of CO2 divided by the number of moles of the original C6H12O6 or glucose. All right, so let's plug in those numbers. So we were given that we had 10 moles of glucose. So 10 moles, and then we multiply that times the ratio of the number of moles of carbon dioxide in our equation, which is six, divided by the number of moles of glucose, which is one. So that's a six to one ratio, which means that the number of moles of carbon dioxide produced when we start with 10 moles of, fruit, of uh, glucose, which is 60 moles, and that's the answer. So it's pretty straightforward when we go from moles to moles. Just put in the number of moles that was given from the reactant, and then put in the ratio of how many more or less moles we're going to end up with in the product. In this case, it's a six to one ratio, six moles of carbon dioxide for every one mole of glucose. So six to one ratio times the number of moles we started with. So we end up with 60 moles of carbon dioxide. That's how you do that.